A white University of Kentucky student accused of physically assaulting a black student worker while repeatedly using racial slurs pleaded not guilty during an arraignment on Monday. Sophia Rosing was captured on cell phone video attacking that victim who was working the front desk of an on-campus residence. Now the victim says she saw Rosing enter the building and appeared to be intoxicated. I say, are you okay? And she continues to look at me and she starts calling me a... Um, a She bit me along my arm. She um, punched me in my face. And she kicked me in my stomach as well. She tried to run me over with a grocery cart that was in the lobby. This girl just continuously was berating me, not only with her words, but with her hands. Now, Rosine was arrested and charged with assault, assaulting a police officer, intoxication in a public place, and disorderly conduct. Hold on, there's some more footage. Because she also speaks about it. Okay. And then we can just go in on it. So everybody wants a story time because my videos on TikTok keep getting taken down. Okay, so last night I was at work and I'm a desk clerk here at the University of Kentucky. And there was a girl, she came in drunk. And when she came in drunk, she was looking at the elevator um, and she was like stumbling and she started talking to the elevator. She was like, I'm going to effing um, end you. Basically, like, I'm going to end you like off you. And so basically what happened we word and we word multiple times. Um, she's punched me twice at this point. She's bitten on my arm a few times as well as kicked me in my stomach. Um, and then she tried to run me and my friend over with a shopping cart. My friend also was experiencing these things. Um, I'm choosing to keep her in private until she decides that she wants to say something about it because I feel like her experience is her experience and I cannot speak for her. So I see anything about her being registered in the system as Jane Doe. That was because she was refusing to give a name. She didn't have her phone. She didn't have an ID or anything. Um, but then she was continuously um, just saying the words, saying it out loud. Um, she ended up actually kicking a police officer, biting a police officer. Um, they finally took her away. But um, I just find the situation very unfortunate. The problem. I want y'all to read it. YouTube, I want y'all to read it. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, John. Okay. So I want to say it like this. You got. I'm telling you, there's three kinds of people that can really tell you the truth. A child, a drunk, and angry people. That white girl, she was two of them. Two of them right there. And I got another thing. Where is the anti-hate law for our black community? For stuff like this. For a, woman, a white woman could be out of control like that, can say anything she wants to be said. Even though she was arrested, it should be more stuff into that. Of what, what we need, this situation right here, do we need an anti hate law against our black community? This is so, this is very, very important because this is, this is something right here that not only this college, but other colleges in America goes to. They just might not, not be showing it here. But fortunately, we caught this and it, you know, and it got into the uh swirled on social media and everything. And and stuff like this happened to me, I think stuff like this happened all the time in other colleges. It's just not being reported enough. We need a anti-hate law for our community for, to, to, to really lock her up and really to tight, tighten this up for our black community and really put these, these racist people into jail. 
Because this is insane. We're twenty twenty two now. We're def- and this this has to, this really has to stop. But like I said, racism still exists. It's going to, to me. It's going to continue with this. But for our black community, we need anti hate law so we can really crank it down a little bit. That's my quick take. And I'm gonna just keep it one hundred, keep it a bug. Cause on this panel, we try to keep it as honest. And of course, everything we say is opinion based. But I'm gonna keep it real. Black people are the most hypocritical people on on the face of the earth, and this is why. They allow hip hop music to do it. They allow mu- movies to do it. They allow our neighbors to do it. When I mean neighbors, like people that look like us, to call each other the N word. So when a white person does it, now it's racism. That's why I say we hypocritical. We gotta pick one. We gotta pick either side. Do we want it or do we do we want it or do we don't want it? Pick one. And I think that's the issue we're having because right now, Joe, like you said. We could create these laws, yes, but the problem is black people still gonna do it among themselves. So that's what I'm saying. Is it really hate speech? That was a there's a so that was a I, I respect a small group of individual, and we know we're not gonna say the five star boys, that they don't play around with that. You're not gonna go around calling anybody, mistreating anybody, is that that's not how they fly. Because they have some they have resources and they understand the, the whole Understand how politics, the politics run and how the laws run. Our community, we don't. Yes, it's it, unfortunate. It's a terrible thing that happened to that young lady. You know, I don't think no one should experience that. And that's from the bottom of my heart. No one should experience that. However, the black community is a hypocritical community because, yeah, we still listen to that same, the same slur in the music videos and also the music we listen to. That's my take. My brothers. Like always, y'all boys hit it out the box. Hit it out the box. And, you know, I'm just going to come with a Marcus Garvey perspective. And I just want to touch on each and one, one of y'all. We do need a hate crime bill for blacks and with stricter punishment, like Jordan said, and punitive punishment where you have to lose some type of money. What Roni came and talked about was something that is very pivotal because we casually use that word nigger or nigga. And Facts. We do get upset when the white boys say it. And to alleviate that, um, they hear it in rap songs. I feel that, I'm about to say real something controversial, I feel that the word should be banned completely on all platforms uh, it should be flagged on television, radio stations, YouTube, TikTok, and all that. I'm talking about demonetization. Because the thing about it is we need to have a stricter understanding that, hey, we're not our forefathers and my name ain't Toby. Now, here's the point that I want to get in. I want to apologize to that beautiful sister. I could tell she's educated and I could tell she didn't grow up ghetto because she spoke very clearly eloquently spoke her words and her nouns proficiently with that being said one thing i wish for her to have done to alleviate that we should have sent her to she should have went to an hbcu she would should have went to an hbcu good point Cause you want to know why? At an HBCU, everybody you turn around look like you. Good point. You feel me? Marcus Garvey said we got to. Marcus Garvey and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad <clears throat> all say we have to take care of our own people, build on, leave these people along with their stuff. But HBCU, you got to make it affordable for people who can't afford to go there. Some of y'all are hella expensive. Our babies is going to these state schools because they're cheap and financially excuse them. You did your thing. You did your thing back in the days when we had no choice to go to you, but y'all was a lot cheaper then. What can we do where we can get enough funding so all our black babies can go to HBCUs so we can rebuild our nation? We don't need to go to these state schools to have these lily white folks call us nigga. Because to be honest with you, if you want to be politically correct, freedom of speech is freedom of speech here. Even if it's d- defamatory at times. We want to, you know what I'm saying? But we know that 
Roni said this real clearly. It won't be defamatory if we as people stop saying a word. It's kind of hard for a lot of us to feel a little bit concerning. And mind you, let's give a caveat. The reason why I say that the, the young ladies sound very educated, I could tell she didn't grow up like me, me, Mustang Ron, and Jordan, New Jordan era, because we grew up here in nigga all our life from family and from the white boys. Facts. We're accustomed to it. And we beating the brakes off y'all when you say it to us. And we willing to die about it. So for us to understand this, as we being older, we know the negative effects with that word. So we were strict from even trying to speak it in our everyday speech. We need to have our brothers and sisters. If we're going to stand with her, we can't say the word either and not listen to no rap music that do that. And sister, yeah, let's get on the Marcus Garvey tip. You need to withdraw from University of Kentucky and go to an HBCU that's in your feet, that's there. If you got no choice to go to University of Kentucky, I don't know what you're doing. If you're trying to be a geologist or a Jim Stone in this, then I can understand that. But make sure you major in something that's going to come back and help your people. If you was at an HBCU, not a damn person to call you a nigga. All these instances we've been seeing in the last couple of weeks, because my brother picked a good one, but there's been many other incidents where black students yeah. were arrested, stopped from going to school. They been asked ID. Listen, yeah. I went, I've never had that done to me, and I went to a public college. Like, hey, we need your ID. You know what I mean? We're living in a different time now. Trump has made it comfortable for people to be who they are, and there's no damages about it. And I want you to be who you are. And mind you, can I tell you something? I'm happy that white girl called her a nigga. Because you want to know why? We see who our enemies are. The time of you saying nigga behind our back, you see that nigga girl? The one with the black hair? No, we, we don't have that day no more. We could point you out. We know where your businesses is at. Because sometimes we probably will come eat a sandwich at your daddy's shop and you done spit in it. No, we ain't doing that no more. Bad enough, I don't eat at no... Bad enough, I only eat at strictly black businesses. Shout out to the Turkey Leg Hut down in Houston. Shout out to Jackson Soul Food. Facts. You know, we only strictly eat at business. Shout out to Sylvia's in New York. You know what I mean? I still get my pants tailored by an old Haitian man at the fleet. If you want to stop this and you want your babies from stop being called a nigger, stop sending them in these white institutions. And that's all I got to say. Max, preach. There you go, I can. Yeah. Uh, I wanted uh, to get what Ronnie was saying and what Hakeem said and put it all together. Yeah. Black people, we need to stay in code. And also, we need to update our code. So I feel like our code is not updated enough. We definitely need to update our code. Because all these other races, they have the code that they follow us. We need to update it so we can be better than all than the others. That's all I gotta say. Good. No, that was a great man. Point. Please, Joey. That was a great point. Man. Damn, that was a great point. And that's why you gotta like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell on the right hand side. Cause we go live each and every Sunday, same thirty Eastern time. And guys, let us know what you think about the whole situation. Do you agree? Well, did you get disagree? This is what I like about YouTube. You can agree or disagree. Let us know what you think in the comment. We over and out. Peace. Peace.